After a better than expected inflation report, the market has broken out of this consolidation range. This was a range that going back to finish off the month of May into June, we consolidated for about eight trading days from about 407 up to about 417 on SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. And kind of a similar situation here to finish off July into August, we consolidated in a similar range, although building higher lows, can't deny that. But today, we did the exact opposite of what we did last time. We ended up breaking out to the upside. Now, not as strong of a move as let's say we saw back in here at least the first couple of days. We'll see if we get continuation. And there is room up to about 430 or so on SPY. That'll be the next substantial area of resistance. However, there's a couple of concerns that we want to point out. Now, first off, a lot of traders and investors were very bearish right down here. Now, for good reason, there's a lot of reasons why based off the economy. However, sentiment was extremely bearish for a very long period of time. And we saw one of the fastest drops, especially if you look at certain sectors and certain stocks that we've ever seen in history. You have to assume there will be bear market rallies in a bear market. However, I think this rally is really, really messing with a lot of investors, traders, and those who are speaking up on CNBC. They're the ones who were saying just a bear market rally, get ready for new lows just a week and a half, two weeks ago. Now that narrative seems to start to be turning as stocks are soaring off of a better than expected inflation report, which did come in here in terms of headline CPI, the consumer price index for July, 8.5% increase year over year. Now let's understand something here. Prices are still going up but just not as much as they were about a month ago. Now, the expectation was an 8.7% increase. We came in 8.5, first time coming in below expectations in quite some time, it feels like, and the market took that as a positive, despite already running up quite a bit going into this reading the past couple of weeks. Why the market likes it is because they're viewing this as a big relief in terms of the Fed's tightening policy. If we start seeing inflation come down, then the Fed's not going to have to hike as much. But what's really interesting here is that even though we're still up over 8% inflation year over year, the Fed wants that number closer to two. We're nowhere near that. The market is already anticipating potentially a Fed pivot and reversal. Now, here's what you need to know going forward. A lot of people, a lot of people are going to be getting squeezed out if they haven't been already. If you take a look at some of the large order flow services out there, you'll see these days there actually are a lot of put buying and big money put buying, millions of dollars in puts. Now, could those be hedges or could those be large positions that big money is looking to take advantage of downside? It's certainly possible that we can see either situation. However, as we start to see retail sentiment turning back up and we start seeing a lot more buyers in the tape, as they say, and we start seeing the stocks like the meme stocks pushing up like we talked about a couple videos ago. You can really start to get a feel for how much that sentiment has shifted in just a matter of a couple of weeks off of these lows. Now, pullback zones are as follows. We'll have to see if we can get back or at least to the top of this range, this 417 on SPY. If that area was to break down, there is a gap to fill back down. If we start to zoom in here a little bit more, there is a gap to fill. And this is the gap about a percent and a half here off that CPI. So a gap back down to roughly 412, 413 on SPY. 400 was an area of resistance right back in here. 400 could be a dip by zone. The 50 period moving average is down here towards around 394. And then below that, another area of resistance uh, was an area of support in the past was here towards 390. And then we have a small gap fill back down here towards about 379. So a lot of circles, a lot of points of interest on our chart here. Do we have to come back to all of them? Do we have to back test them? No, by no means. But those are some areas to watch in case we got that pullback. And let's think about this. Retail gets excited. People start going long again. We get a nice reset on the fear and greed index. People start feeling good about going long and then we get the pullback and people are going to be, if we get a pullback of this, of this degree, you will hear it a hundred percent. Here comes new lows, bear market rally complete time to go down for new lows. Here comes more fed tightening. Now that fed tightening narrative is a point to make sure you consider why. Take a look at the 10-year bond yield. Look at this. If we take a look at the 10-year bond, this is what you want to be paying attention to. You can look at the two-year as well, but let's look at the 10-year. It's kind of a bigger, broad picture, you know, view. Now, the 10-year coming down off those highs has been a really good tailwind for stocks, for growth stocks, and why you're seeing a lot of stocks actually making some nice runs the past couple of weeks. 
but the 10 year has actually been slowly reversing and it's slowly making higher lows. And today was actually a notable day after the CPI report comes out. Why? If you look at the, the zoomed in chart here, well, the 10 year actually began the day prior to CPI up around this 2.8, 2.81. And right after the CPI came out, it fell down to under 2.7. But that was quickly reversed and we ended up finishing actually pretty much flat on the 10 year at 2.785. Now, this is important to note because if this starts to rally back up, that starts to paint the picture of the Fed still needs to be aggressive and that the market maybe is anticipating or was anticipating a pivot that ends up being a little premature to when the Fed actually pivots. Now, the question that we have right now in the markets is really bigger picture. How far ahead is the market trying to price things in? Because if you look back through past history and you look back through past events, the bond market tends to be just ahead of the Fed and that tends to be just ahead of the stock market. But to what degree? It seems like this Fed pivot is expected in the next couple of months or the next six months, whereas in reality, it could be a lot further down the road. And it doesn't necessarily mean that the market must go to new lows, but if that's the case and the market starts pricing that back in, you could definitely see that 10-year reversing. So if the 10-year starts to reverse, that should be a headwind for stocks. It doesn't mean the market must go down, but that will be a headwind for stocks, especially growth stocks and tech stocks, and it will be something to watch. And maybe it ends up completing that head and shoulders pattern officially, where you see more of a right shoulder, a true right shoulder develop here up over three, but below 3.25%. If that's what occurs and we start to fall back from there, that could be your dip buy at that point in time when we start to see the market pulling back and the 10 year then reversing after making a nice push back to the upside. That's the question. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm curious to see what everyone is thinking. Is everyone bullish? Is everyone bearish? What are your thoughts? Let us know down below. We'll leave a link to a webinar covering three trading signals to add to your arsenal for free. It's in the pinned comment and video description box down below. This platform here is TradingView. Check it out. Get a free trial for 30 days if you would like to. Links are down in the video description box. Thanks so much, guys. Thumbs up button. Consider subscribing, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.